I'm Angie Carpenter, Town of Islip Supervisor, and absolutely delighted to be able to be helping uh, facilitate this citizen preparedness uh, presentation that you are going to be hearing this evening. And uh, in addition to our team here in the Town of Islip, our Commissioner of Public Safety, Tony Prudenti, and our Deputy Commissioner, Richard Bastidis, Dominic back there, uh, all part of the team here. And uh, we're absolutely delighted. Um, who else do we have back there? Tommy back there? To do, uh, you know, so many times people complain about government. Uh, we'll hear some negative comments about the state, never about the town, of course. But uh, I really want to thank New York State for what they're doing. And I know Suffolk County is participating too. We have someone here from Suffolk County Fire Rescue and Emergency Services, right? You're from Frizz? Okay. Very cool. Uh, but the two gentlemen that are going to lead us through this, Sergeant Mateo and Sergeant Johnson, um, we really are so appreciative of the fact that you're doing this. This is uh, the time of the year when we're all, you know, thinking about hurricanes. I know Hurricane Lee, I think, is the one that is being talked about now. Um, I facilitated a lot of these over the years, and uh, part of my legislative district when I was in the legislature is Fire Island. Fire Island's part of the town of Islip. The Islip town portion is the most populated part of Fire Island. And that barrier beach protects us here on the mainland. And uh, one of the things that I can remember that just stays with me is that if we would have a hurricane, a category three hurricane, that the doors of Good Samaritan Hospital would be completely covered by water. That's, you know, how vulnerable we are here. So it is important to be prepared. And you are going to, everything you ever wanted to know about being prepared, you're going to find out from these two gentlemen tonight, correct? So without further ado, let's hear it for Sergeants Johnson and Mateo. And thank you so much for your service. Certainly not just tonight, but for your service to our country. We really appreciate it. All right, good afternoon, everybody. I'm uh, Sergeant First Class Johnson. It's my partner, Sergeant First Class Mateo. We're both with the Army National Guard. Um, so, uh, y'all are ready? We'll jump right into it. Y'all ready? ready? All right, let's get it going. All right, so we're going to go over the um, four stages of disaster preparedness. Uh, so, how to prepare for, respond to, and recover from whatever the disaster is. You know, then we'll touch on getting involved, which essentially you all are doing right now by being part of this presentation. So we appreciate you guys being in attendance, you know. And all of this is to help you all become more aware of what to do and how to prepare yourselves in the event of a disaster, okay? So a little history, the uh, Citizen Preparedness Corps uh, was created to help individuals and families learn how to provide assistance for themselves, their families, their neighbors, and community during a disaster. All right, the Citizen Preparedness Corps was started back in 2014, so a couple of years after Sandy. We all remember Sandy, right? Yes. Right, so uh, uh, subsequently because of the results of Sandy, this was put together for the citizens, okay? All right, so potential disasters in New York State. It's what we deal with all the time. So we know we'll have our natural disasters, that's anything in nature, uh, human cause, technological, and any type of biological disaster. So we'll start with Mother Nature, natural disasters, right? So last winter was very kind to us, right? We did not have to pull out the snow blowers for the most part, right? That was last year. We're hoping that this year is just as kind, but we know that's something that we should prepare for on an annual basis. Right, so the same way right now we're dealing with hurricane season, you know, the month of September is National Disaster Preparedness Month. Uh, so with that being said, if you're traveling, you're going on vacation, you wanna make sure that you're not traveling somewhere that gets affected by hurricanes frequently, right? So with that being said, what are we gonna have to deal with this year? We don't know, but we're gonna prepare just the same so we're gonna get those snow blowers ready in case we need them, right? Hopefully we don't need them, but if we do, we're ready, right? 
All right, so human cause hazard. So that's more of like your traffic accidents. You know, so if you're, let's say, out and live closer to the southern state, and you have to go into the city or into Brooklyn or Queens and you have to ride the southern state all the way down, we know that once there's an accident on the southern state, it is, it's a nightmare, you know, unfortunately. So what do we do? We check the news, we, we listen to traffic in the morning. Uh, terrorism being at the top of that list, is there, there isn't anything that we can do to actually prevent it. We just need to be aware of what's going on. So that's just paying attention to your surroundings. You know, whether at work or at home, get to know your neighbors. So if you see something that seems out of sorts, you're reported. All right, damn fails, we don't have to worry about. Who remembers the structural collapse that happened back in Florida? They had that massive structural collapse, right. So, uh, so what does that mean for us? If we get hit with any type of inclement weather or something that forces us out of our homes, before we get back into homes, we wanna make sure that our houses are structurally sound. We don't need anything collapsing on us once we're back, right? Um, chemical biohazards, we've dealt with this. Unfortunately, that's more of the pandemic, right? That's COVID. Um, and then we'll touch more on the uh, active assailant uh, in the presentation. All right, so technological cyber hazards or disasters. So who remembers back in 2003, we had that power outage, right? We had that power outage that last about 29 hours. So that was 29 hours of sitting in the dark, for the most part, you know? Um, so what didn't we have at that time? There was no Uber Eats, you're not ordering anything, <laughs> right? Uh, if you were at work, more than likely you were trapped because if you had to rely on public transportation, the subways were down, we had absolutely no power. So during that time, I can remember most people were utilizing candles to light their home. Candles are beautiful. They look good, they smell good. Not the safest choice in the event of a power outage. So what should we be using? Flashlights, batteries, things of that nature. Uh-oh. I'm gonna go without the mic, y'all can still hear me? All right, so, so we know that we've learned from that. So in the event of, uh, blackouts or power outages, we know what we need to have moving forward. All right, and biological disasters, like I said, the top of the list, pandemic. I'm sick of the pandemic, I'm sure all of you are as well, you know. So early on during the pandemic, what we had a problem with? Getting used to wearing masks, right? So we are all mask wearing professionals now, I would imagine, um, but during the pandemic, we had that scare of monkeypox. Anybody remembers that? Right, so that right there is an example of an epidemic. And who are my animal lovers? Who has pets in here? All right, so those of you that have animals, you have pets, make sure that you keep them up to date with their vaccinations, their shots, so to prevent any type of animal disease, spreading of that. And uh, groceries are super expensive, right? So when we go grocery shopping, you wanna make sure that you're reading those labels. Make sure you're not purchasing something that is expired to prevent uh, picking up anything that's contaminated, any type of contaminated food. All right, so now is the fun time we're gonna go into how to prepare for some of these disasters. All right, so we know that during a disaster, for, uh, first responders are always overwhelmed. You know, and we've seen that with the pandemic as an example, right? Uh, so what does that mean for us? We learned that during that time, if you went out, they told us we had to stay inside, but if you went out to purchase items, we know that the cupboards were bare, you went to the supermarket, you couldn't get certain things, right? So how do we prepare for that moving forward? Now, I'm not trying to turn anybody into any hoarders. However, we know that you should buy in bulk and try to keep some stuff, some supplies put to the side just in case, all right? So all of this is to help you all become more aware of what to do. So this is all pre preventative measures that you need to start taking place uh, prior to whatever the event is. All right, so the uh, four steps to being prepared. So you wanna develop and discuss a plan with your family. So however many people live in your household, that's what you wanna include, all right? You wanna build some sort of an emergency kit. So. Today, attending this, you guys are gonna receive 
uh, a go kit or go bag, disaster preparedness bag, that is just an example of things that you may need. That doesn't mean you get the bag and you're fully prepared. Please just use that as an example and you're gonna adjust the kit to fit your lifestyle, all right? You wanna make sure you stay up to date with what's going on before, during, and after the disaster. So during uh, the pandemic, you know, the news kept reporting where, where the numbers were highest, the more people that had tested positive for COVID. So you know, if you lived out on Long Island and they said Queens has a higher rate, you didn't travel to Queens, right? Objective of that was to stay as safe as possible. All right, and then like I said, what you're doing right now, getting involved, if you volunteer at any uh, type of organization, perfect thing to do. All right, so preparing your homes and families for a disaster. So, like I said, you're gonna develop a plan, discuss it with your entire family, right? And not just, if you have small kids, you know, kids always ask questions, well, why do we have to do this? You're gonna explain to them why, why this is important, why just being ready is important. All right, identify types of disasters that we deal with. So we know we tend to deal with the inclement weather, maybe some, well, Long Island, it'll all flood, so flooding as well. So you wanna make sure that you have all the necessary equipment in your home to deal with that, all right? Uh, and if by chance you're displaced from your home, you know, they say, hey, this is what's happening right now, you have to evacuate, where are you going? Do you have places identified right now as to where to go, you know? So that right there may not seem as important, but if they say you have to be out of your home for 10 days, right? Seven to 10 days. You wanna make sure that whatever place you pick, whichever loved one you decide to stay with, make sure they're your favorite, <laughs> all right? Because those least favorite loved ones, you're already stressed out, you're dealing with the, uh, whatever the disaster is happening, uh, you're displaced from your home, and then you gotta say, I gotta come and deal with this person, I'd rather deal with the hurricane or whatever's going on, right? So just please be mindful of that. Um, also, you wanna create some sort of a communication plan. All right, so if everybody uh, out your household is gone at work or school, everybody has cell phones, right? Mm -hmm. So if whoever you decide to stay with if you're displaced, you call them. Say, everybody has to check in with this person. You know, you make that a routine and say, hey, I'm trying to call my spouse. I can't reach him or her. I can't reach the kids. You call that person. Have you heard from them? They say, yes, everybody has checked in. So what does that provide to you? Some sort of peace of mind. You're already dealing with a stressful situation. You want to make sure that your loved ones are safe and accounted for. So that's why you want to develop that communication plan. All right, you wanna develop an evacuation plan. So what are some alternate routes to get out of the city or out of, off the island, right? Do we have alternate routes? You know, we're, we're quite limited on the island, you know, quite limited, but you wanna make sure that you have those routes just in case. The same way if you're trying to head into work and they say, hey, there's a, a bad accident on this main road and everybody travels it, uh, how do you go around it? You know, so make sure you develop routes, alternate routes, um, and try to bring or keep a map in your car. I know that's strange because we have cell phones, so we rely heavily on the navigation in our car and our cell phones to tell us where to go. But prior to cell phones, if you had to go anywhere, you use the map to get to your location. We don't use maps anymore. We don't probably see maps as often. So that's something that you can use to keep handy to keep in your vehicles, all right? And you're gonna plan for the entire family, all right? Everybody that lives in your household, so adults, children, pets, make sure you plan for everyone, all right? So if let's say you and your significant other get into a bit of a disagreement today and the disaster's tomorrow, you cannot say to them, I remember what you said to me yesterday, I'm leaving you, figure it out for yourself. So make sure you include everybody in that planning. All right, you wanna make sure that you check with these places, places of work, uh, schools, daycare centers, uh, make sure that they have some sort of a emergency plan in place. You know, so that lets you know that 
your loved ones are safe when they're in these establishments. All right? Um, so most people don't really do this. I know children, it's second nature. The schools do fire drills and things of that nature all the time, right? Why we don't do drills at home? If there's a fire at home and you had to escape, what are you doing? Are you just grabbing everybody and trying to get out as fast as possible? It's what you want to do, but you want to try to start rehearsing some things, right? Come up with different scenarios in case, you know, you're in this situation, you have an idea of what to do. It becomes muscle memory, all right? All right, so building an emergency kit. You are going to customize the kit to your lifestyle, all right? Like I said, so if you have to evacuate your home, you want to grab your go kit, go kit or go bag, all right? Every individual in your household needs their own go kit, all right? So like I said, you are probably going to be out of your house. You're going to be displaced if you have to evacuate for seven to 10 days. So you want to plan accordingly. All right, so the website at the bottom of this slide is a great source of information. Uh, toward the end of the presentations, we'll have a list of all these websites. You guys can take pictures of that later. All right, so like I said, you're customizing your kit to your stage of life. You know, so whether you have infants, you have anybody, any seniors, you have pets, make sure, or anybody with any disabilities, you want to make sure that your kit is customized to your lifestyle. So who remembers uh, just last year we had that formula shortage? So if you had babies, you had small children, and children that received formula, what were you doing during that time if you were without formula? You know? Like I said, I'm not trying to turn anybody into any hoarders but make sure you stock up on supplies in case you need it. Not when you need it, you wanna have them before the actual event happens. All right, how many people have first aid kits at home? Okay, how many people have first aid kits in their vehicle? That's good, it's an important item to have. Um, make sure at your place of work, where your kids go to school, make sure that they have first aid kits that are handy as well. You know, ask. Even if you go to like the local library, say, hey, if there was an emergency, you guys have first aid kits here? Yes. You know, yes should be the answer in every environment to include this town hall. If you ask somebody where's the nearest first aid kit, they should be able to provide that to you. All right? So um, we all know where to purchase these items. You go to any hardware store. Uh, those of you that love shopping online, y'all are uh, Amazon Prime members. You order it today, you'll probably have it tomorrow if you need it. Okay, some, some protective uh, supplies, uh, some PPE. So we all know that because of COVID, we all were mask crazy, right? Everybody should still have those masks handy as well. Why? What do we just have to deal with? Those Canadian wildfires, right? came on through here, we looked up in the sky, the sky looked orange, and you're like, what is this stuff that I'm inhaling? If you had, and a lot of people reached in their pockets and they pulled out their mask. But some of us were so done with wearing masks, they were like, I don't need to carry it anymore. It's, it's the simplest items, you should absolutely always keep that as handy as possible. You know, so one of the more important items on this list uh, that's posted is a whistle, right? Why a whistle? If you're trapped by any chance, you can only scream for help, but for so long, you're going to get tired, you're gonna get dehydrated. But if you have a whistle, whistles are small enough, you can fit that on a keychain, keep it around your neck, put it in your pocket. If you're trapped, you grab a whistle, you blow on that whistle, it's a very distinct sound to draw attention to you. All right, so you, so help will be provided or know where to find you, okay? All right, so you are stuck indoors. You said, all right, I don't have to evacuate, but I have to stay home. So you have to make sure you have some sustainable supplies. So that's your non-perishable foods. Uh, we all like those um, electric can openers. You might want to keep a manual one handy just in case you need it. You probably need it for that. And, you know, you're going to have your disposable utensils, forks, knives, things of that nature. Uh, but you want to make sure you have a supply 
of emergency, let's say, rations handy in the house, right? And then you don't want to utilize those until you have to deal with the emergency, right? Create a list and write down anything that's going to expire, all the expiration dates, right? So when you do that, if you have something that you know that's going to expire soon, you could probably put that list on the fridge, say, all right, this expires next month. Let me prepare it now because we don't want to waste any items, right? We don't want to waste any items. And then you want to be able to say, all right, cool, I, I've used it, I've replaced it, so in case I need it, I'm fully stocked, right? Um, drinking water. So you want to make sure you have enough water for your household. So it says on this slide, one gallon of water, if you're in the house for 10 days, one gallon of water per person for each day. So if you're in the house for 10 days, that's 10 gallons of water per person. So if there are four of you in a household, that's 40 gallons of water. If you have a pet, that's 50 gallons of water. All right? And then what happens with the water that you're using just to conduct personal hygiene becomes contaminated. They say, hey, do not use the water. Shut your water off. Then what are you going to do with this drinking water? You're going to have to use that for personal hygiene as well. All right? So I know we may not all have the space to store 40, 50 gallons of water, right? But you want to make sure you have enough water to sustain you for a certain amount of time during the emergency. All right? So personal hygiene products. We should all buy in bulk. BJ's, Costco, Sam's Club, make sure you get your toothbrush, toothpaste, soap, all that stuff from there. But on this list, the most important item to have, if there's an emergency, baby wipes. Why baby wipes? So if the water isn't usable and you're trying to sustain the drinking water you have, you still have to conduct personal hygiene. So if you can't shower, baby wipes absolutely come in handy, right? So that's, you know, being in the military, we live off of that when we're stuck in the field and we can't get to a shower for a few weeks. You know, please, please don't hold that against us. <laughs> all right, emergency tools. So we know, make sure you have flashlights and batteries, all right? Where you have your flashlights and batteries stored, uh, well, most of you that if y'all keep flashlights and batteries, do y'all keep them stored in the flashlight? No? Some people do, but it's good that you don't do it because that's just going to corrode the batteries. So make sure you keep them separate, okay? Uh, cell phone chargers. I'm sure we've all at some point asked to borrow somebody's charger. My cell phone is about to die. Do you have a charger? You know, and then there's that argument, well, what do you have? You have an Android or you have an iPhone, you know? So, but just make sure that you have an extra charger handy. Uh, they sell those portable uh, recharging packs. You can just charge that one time, and then if you need it, you can utilize that. That's something that you can fit in a book bag. So maybe that's an additional item you want to add to your, um, your go bag, your emergency kit, all right? Because I promise you we are not supplying that today. All right, pet supplies. So you want to make sure that your pet is up to date with all their shots. You want to make sure that the same way you have food, um, non-perishable foods for yourself, you want to have these items for your animal as well. You know, When children get older and they leave the house, we get pets. Pets become family members. So we want to treat them uh, just the same. All right, so please remember to take care of your pets. Uh, just a quick story. During Sandy, uh, myself and a few of uh, my soldiers, we were conducting um, health and welfare checks on Staten Island. So a lot of people made it out, which was great. Uh, a lot of people did not secure their homes, which wasn't. Uh, so we entered a few homes, and we found a bunch of uh, animals. We've all come across some animals that were just left behind. So make sure you include your pet. If you have to evacuate, they should have to evacuate as well, all right? If you're going somewhere uh, with somebody that has, let's say, a pet allergy, then there are going to be shelters in place that have to board your animal, all right? So since um, Sandy, they've put that measure in place, 
All right, so you just gotta find out what are the local shelters in your area that do that. All right, so document holders, make sure you have all your important documents and any type of document holder. You wanna make sure it's a waterproof bag. All right, so if you don't have to go on Amazon or online and look for a waterproof document um, holder, you can go to the supermarket, buy one of those two and a half gallon Ziploc bags, and put your important documents in there. I promise you, it is now waterproof, okay? Um, you wanna make sure that you keep some cash handy. You know, put that in there. Please do not empty out any bank accounts, no retirement accounts, just a couple of dollars. That's going to help you in case you need that, all right, if the ATMs aren't working, all right? And at the bottom of this list, maps. Keep a map. Look for a map. Have a map of your area, all right? Who goes camping here? Anybody camps? So when you go camping, you tend to have maps when you go camping, right? But we don't have maps in our vehicles. It's an item that we should have in our vehicles moving forward. All right, you want to make sure that inside your document holder you have these items. You have your birth certificate, your uh, marriage certificate, social security cards. These are items that can be replaced, but they're a little challenging to replace. It's going to take some time. So you're going to make sure you make copies of these items. All right, you have the original, make a copy, and then have an additional copy stored somewhere outside of the home with somebody that you trust. All right, so if by chance you need to get a hold of any of these items, you have them. You want to make sure that also your insurance policies are up to date. All right, so if you have, everybody should have homeowners or renters insurance. If you live on a Long Island, more than likely you have flood insurance, probably required because it's Long Island. Uh, but make sure that all those policies are up to date. All right, if you're not sure when you get home, check. Absolutely check. All right, so your evacuation bags, your go kit, so that's if you have to evacuate your home. So if, like I said, if they say, hey, you have to leave right now, everybody's gonna grab their individual bag and you're gonna leave. And it's no more the size, it's a book bag essentially. You wanna make sure you have those items stored in something as a book bag, why? Because it's lightweight, everybody can carry it, and you should be able to move, uh, exit your home as quickly as possible, all right? Please do not take these bags and say, well, let's store everything in one big duffel bag and somebody remember to get the bag. There's a good chance that the bag can either be too heavy or you can forget it. So make sure each individual have their own bag prepared. All right, so these are a few items that you should have in your bag. Uh, there are a few items that are on this list that are absolutely gonna be in your bag. You'll have your first aid kit that comes with the bag as well. Uh, I think one of the more important items that's not listed that I think everybody should have is a COVID test kit, right? Because they're small enough. They'll fit in a book bag and if by any chance anybody gets sick, you want to be able to rule that out. That's why you want to make sure that there's a COVID test kit in every bag. Just a suggestion, you don't have to have it, but I have it in my own personal bag. All right, so preparing your homes for Fire, so how many people have fire extinguishers? In the home, it's fire, good. Fire. fire extinguishers in the home. It's good, it's a good item to have. Um, make sure you have your carbon monoxide detectors at home. Know where all your utility shutoffs are. So where you shut off your electricity, your gas, your water, please know where all those items are and make sure you have a first aid kit at home, always, all right? You want to make sure that your smoke detector is working. You know, you press that little test button, it's going to go off a couple of times. You're going to like, all right, cool, it's functioning. Uh, most smoke alarms are going to administer a green light so you know that it's good. If that light ever goes from green to red, that means you need to replace the batteries. Okay? Uh, please don't judge me for this. I've been in my kitchen cooking, and I've set that smoke alarm off countless times. And the first thing I do is I take the battery out. I have to remind myself to replace that battery after I'm done, you know? So just remember, if you're ever in that situation, please make sure you're doing that as well. And uh, if you don't remember the last time you changed the batteries in your smoke alarm, um, write it down. So the same place you keep that list of all those foods that are going to expire, 
you can write down the last time you changed the batteries in your smoke alarm. All right, fire extinguishers. The best type of fire extinguisher to have is one that covers all three of these classes, class A, B, and C. So this red fire extinguisher that's over here to my left, your right, that's the type of fire extinguisher that you should have in your home. All right, and it, it will cover uh, every last one of these classes. Okay, so not only do you need the fire extinguisher, you should know how to use the fire extinguisher. So this acronym PASS, it's a great way to remember how to utilize the fire extinguisher. All right, so that P, you're gonna pull the pen. A, you're gonna aim at the fire. That first S, you'll squeeze the handle. And then that last one, you're gonna sweep at the base of the fire. All right, so what's the point of having a fire extinguisher if you don't know how to use it? All right, I promise you, if there's a fire and you cannot remember this acronym, and you take your fire extinguisher and you throw it at the fire, it's not gonna put it out. So. Um, most fire extinguishers now will have this on there. It'll have the acronym PASS on the fire extinguisher. So just make sure you, uh, you know how to use it. All right, carbon monoxide. So everybody should have carbon monoxide detectors in the home, yes? All right, so you keep them stored high where the smoke alarms are? No, 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 because you should. A lot of people say that, hey, no, I have the carbon monoxide and smoke alarm all in one, and most people keep their smoke alarms up high, but for carbon monoxide, that needs to be stored down low, all right? Yes, so you wanna make sure you have that there, because if you store it up high, by the time that carbon monoxide detector goes off, it's probably gonna be too late for you. So make sure you keep those plugged in down low. Um, so, uh, knowing, like I said, where your, uh, how to shut off all of these items, your furnace, your electrical panel, um, your water heater, your fuel tanks, do you, make sure you know where these items are located and how to shut them off, how to disconnect them in case you need to, all right? Um, knowing if you need any type of special tools to shut these items off is also important. Okay, so I'm gonna give you guys some information, but y'all didn't hear this from me, okay? So with your water, you'll have a main shut off in your house, you have one shut off in your house, and you have the one that's out in the street, right? So if by chance your water's off, or you forgot to pay your water bill, it's been some time, I don't know, I'm not judging you, and they come and they shut your water off, they're shutting it off from the street. There is a tool that they're using to shut your water off. You can purchase that same tool at Ace Hardware, Home Depot, Lowe's, you know, so if they shut it off when they leave, you can shut it back on, I'm just saying. You know, you have that option. But make sure if you have um, anything, uh, any items that require any special tools, make sure you have those tools handy as well in your home. All right, of course, once you've turned these items off, never attempt to turn them on until you've given the uh, proper instructions from um, the professionals. So whether it's your gas, electric, um, or your water, make sure that if you've had to, let's say, evacuate your home, and they said turn these items off before you evacuate, when you come back home, you wanna check with them first. They say, all right, is it okay for me to turn these things back on? They'll say yes, and then you can do so, all right? Um, first day, how many people know first day? Great, so first aid isn't necessarily for yourself, it's for your loved ones. If somebody's exhibiting any type of signs of distress, you wanna make sure that you have the training possible to help them, all right? So if not, the uh, Red Cross offers these courses online, in person, and hybrid, so absolutely at your earliest convenience, you should sign up for a first aid class and make sure you take them annually. All right, I think the recertification is every year. Huh? Every two, every two years? All right, every two years. We have to do it in the military every year. I don't know why. All right, COVID. So I don't know what else to say about COVID. I'm tired of the pandemic. You're tired of the pandemic. It affected everybody differently, but I'm, all, I'm almost positive that we've all, we've known somebody that's test positive for COVID or unfortunately passed away from it. All right? So of course, during the pandemic, they said, all right, 
you have to wear these masks. Here's mask we're handing out. Here's some gloves. Here's some hand sanitizer. And we were good with the gloves and the hand sanitizer, but those masks, it took us some time to get adjusted to it, right? Most people wore their mask how? When they first got it? Covering their mouth, but their nose were exposed, right? So I promise you, during that time, people were still getting COVID through their nasal passage, so that was the wrong way of wearing it. So now that we're all mask wearing professionals, we know that if you have to wear this mask, you wanna make sure that it is uh, covering the bridge of your nose, uh, it's wrapped around your ears and it goes around your cheek. So your entire uh, face is covered for the most part from the bridge of your nose on down. All right, cyber awareness. So we've all received these crank calls or uh, who received the call? Somebody trying to get you to update your vehicle warranty, right? Or you'll get those spam emails uh, those, uh, about something. Make sure if you don't trust it, don't give out your information, okay? So they send out those, uh, um, those spam emails. Uh, let's say your bank, what, what appears to be your bank sends you that, saying, hey, we need you to just log in uh, and update your information. So in that email, there's gonna be a link. You'll, you'll press that link, that link brings you to a website that looks just like your bank. You put in your username and password, and it doesn't work. You try it again, it still doesn't work. Guess what, they have just captured your information. So now they're gonna go to the real website and try to empty out your bank account. So if you don't trust it, don't use it, all right? Make sure you keep your passwords up to date, you know. Be creative with your password. Try not to use last names, but you wanna make sure you have upper and lowercase uh, numbers, you wanna make sure you have letters and special characters when creating your password, all right? Change your passwords as often as you see fit. You know, don't be like us in the military, we have to change our passwords every six months. I'm not suggesting you do that, but make sure you have a password that you can remember, all right? Okay, you wanna make sure you stay up to date with what's going on during whatever the emergency is before, during, and after. All right, so we all have our cell phones. If by chance there was an Amber Alert right now, everybody's cell phone will be going off, right? So, um, so alert, the ny.alert is a great source of information. It keeps you up to date with what's going on, all right? So it's a free app, free with uh, iPhones and Androids. So at the end of the presentation, if you want it, you can just scan the QR code on the sign and you can get the uh, app free of charge, all right? So we all know when we're driving, if we hear any warning sirens, what does that mean? If there's an emergency vehicle approaching from the rear, pull over, let them pass. Um, the emergency alert system, formerly known as the emergency broadcast system. We should all be familiar with that. If you've ever been up late night watching television, it's come on your television. All right, during the pandemic, they were utilizing that system to keep you up to date with what's going on. Uh, and just, who knows what a NOAA radio is? All right, it's great. Uh, so that's, that's essentially your weather radio. So if by chance the power uh, in your home is out, if you have that NOAA radio, it's typically crank operated, you don't need to plug it in, you utilize that to stay up to date what's going on weather-wise. All right, so it's a great tool, great item to have. Uh, unfortunately, they are not in the bags. There are, there's a radio in there, but it's not a NOAA radio. So please don't look for that, that you have to purchase on your own. All right, we've all seen this sign. See something, say something, right? So if there's any type of activity, suspicious activity, you don't trust it, report it, okay? All right, so not saying that when you're home, and if you're looking through your blinds or curtains and you see, you're looking at your neighbors, if you're like, hey, who's this lady? Because his wife is away and I don't know who's this woman he's walking with. You don't want to be that type of person. But if there's any type of suspicious activity going on in your neighborhood or at your job, make sure if you don't trust it, you report it, okay? But it's great to get to know your coworkers, get to know your neighbors, so you'll know what's going on beforehand. 
All right. So we all know if there's any type of an emergency, we all know to call 911. All right. If there's any type of suspicious activity uh, throughout the state, you'll utilize the middle number, the 866 Safe NYS. Uh, and then if there's anything going on within the city of New York, you'll call that number, the, the bottom number, that's the 888-NYC SAFE. All right, so in addition to this, something new, I'm not sure if you guys have ever seen this one, it's see something, send something, right? So what is that? So it's another app that's free. You can go to the app store and download it at uh, ny.gov slash csend, ny. But what did that do? It'll give you the opportunity to report any type of suspicious activity without being on the phone. It's essentially like sending a text message. All right, so you're gonna send that through that app. That's gonna go to the New York State Intelligence Center, and then they're gonna reroute that to your local authorities. So if you're ever in a situation to where you don't wanna draw attention to yourself, act like you're sending a text message, but you're really trying to get help. Okay. All right, so that concludes my portion of the presentation. My partner, Sar Mateo, is going to continue to rest. Thank you. Thank you, Sergeant First Class Johnson. So we got the point of respond, right? You are the first responders. I know we have first responders up here um, in, the, in the back, to the back right. Any other first responders here? Auntie, okay. Thank you. Thank you. So you guys are ahead of the game. So if you're the first responder, right, during most weather events, you have two main choices, right? You're going to either shelter in place or you're going to evacuate. If you do shelter in place, you're going to use your plan for staying safe at home, right? You're going to use your emergency go kit bag. If you evacuate, you're going to follow the local evacuation orders, right? Use your plan for leaving your home community for a selected and appropriate shelter and then use your go kit bag. If you shelter in place, you want to maintain awareness. All right, situational awareness, you know. Check on your neighbors. If you're privy to some information and some of these neighbors are incapacitated or they're just much elderly you know, uh, personnel and they live alone, you may want to check on them, okay? Maintain communication information to and from authorities. Use emergency radio for weather, right? Emergency notifications, evacuation orders and directions, and use the 911 for life-threatening emergencies only. If you shelter in place, you want to shut off your damaged utilities, right? You want to stay away from all down wires, right? You want to consider them alive. I live not too far away from here, and there was uh, on Salisbury Street, there's a cable company there. There was a down wire, that was, there was down wires, and it was arcing all over the place, it was sparking everywhere, right? And people were driving back and forth, and I'm like, what are you doing? So I pulled my car, thank God it was my uniform, I stopped, they stopped, had them do an about face, and they left. The fire department was right across the street. So when the fire department was notified, they closed off the street and made it safe. Another story, ventilate generators and space heaters. When I was in Sandy, doing Howard Beach, there was a lady making food, and she was the only one with power. She had a generator, windows were closed, all right? And I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm hungry. I want to eat. I'm like, ma'am, you're about to pass out. You're about to, about to die. So we evacuated her out of the apartment, back out, you know, to a place of refuge. So that this really happens. Review safety recommendations, right? Check car monoxide, monoxide alarms. Stay alert for boil water orders. Does anybody know how to boil water? Anybody ever boil, boil water? No? All right. Issue as precautionary because testing shows contamination that could cause illnesses or issue due to physical damage to water system, which increases bacterial co contaminations. Not sure of the quality of your water? You're gonna boil it, and that's how we boil water. Right, you're gonna strain through a cheesecloth, coffee filter, or other type of filter. You wanna bring water to a boiling two minutes, two minutes. Let the water cool. Pour into a container that has been boiled or sanitized with chlorine bleach. And to preserve the quality of water, refrigerate the water until use, and you keep doing the same thing. Another story with this, when I was 15 years old, my mother was collecting water because we had no water in the, throughout the building. And I'm like, Mom, we're not drinking that bathtub water. I told my sister, we're not doing that. She goes, no, dummy, that's not for you to consume. That's for the commode, the toilet bowl, to flush the toilet because there's no water. 
<laughs> so that was resonating in my head, and I always got to say that because my mother taught me something. Structural class procedures, right? If you're trapped, you want to call 911. There's pockets and voids that you may be able to live, right? Uh, identify how you're trapped, try to free yourself and call for help. If someone else is trapped, you call 911, right? Identify their statuses, can you free them safely? Sometimes you can. So I responded to 9-11, the day of, and there was pockets and voids everywhere. And we did a lot of uh, low angle uh, searches, but they were hot, they were just too hot. And there was pockets and voids there. And I got to see some stuff that, I won't talk about it, but um, they were deceased, but we at least recovered the remains. So there are pockets and voids, I'm just driving my point home, that there are pockets, pockets and voids that you can survive. If you evacuate, you want to alert your neighbors to evacuations. You want to follow official instructions. Make it known where you're going. Follow the plan for sheltering your pets. Take your pets, because that's what I saw in Sandy as well. We rescue everybody, but they left the pets behind. You know, Rec I, I believe American Red Cross, they take the pets now as long as they're vaccinated. You know, um, they get segregated from the adults to the animals, but you could, of course, see them. You want to secure your home if there is time. You want to take your go kit bag, emergency supply kit, notify contacts when you arrive at your destination, return home only when authorities have notified you that it is safe, they're all clear, and it's safe to come back. We, we teach seven to 10 days, right? Hopefully the first responders, LIPA, PSCNG, Con Ed, has given us some type of, you know, back to normalcy. So, so the same thing you do for your home, you want to do for your car. Maintain your vehicle, right? You want to keep tank at least half full of fuel. You want to ensure you have proper tires. And you want to store emergency supplies in your vehicle. I always say the same thing for those that have boats out here and cab tree, not too far away from here. So you have no idea where, you know, where you're going to get caught in an event of emergency. Might be getting caught in the water, might get caught on the road, home, however. Um, so this is your tools, right? Com your compass, your antiquated flip phone. You still make those. Active assailant, what should, you, what should you do? So this is the definition of active assailant, right? We call the assailant now because it's not only by gun. You got knife wielders, that happened in Vegas. The guy stabbed three or four people, right? You got a truck running down the West Side Highway going southbound. And he killed eight Argentinian family, right? So that's the, uh, that's the meaning. An active assailant is an individual actively engaged in killing or attempting to kill people in a confined and populated area, most cases using firearms, with no pattern or method to their selection of victims. Because active assailant situations are often over within 10 to 15 minutes, that's the problem. Udavi took what? Udavi took 77 minutes. And that's only because of the fact that that's potential SWAT team that went in there, they kept hitching. They didn't go in. They didn't, they didn't secure that fight. So what happened? CBP showed up, right? Customs Border Patrol showed up. They pushed the fight. They pushed those officers away, and they neutralized that assailant. So sometimes before law enforcement arrives, individual must be prepared both mentally and physically to deal with an active assailant situation. These are some of the uh, this, the incidents that happened last year, as you know now, there's more incidents. It's almost every other week there's an incident going on. The mass transit 36th Street subway station, that was a gentleman that worked with the uh, MTA. Uh, he shot, I think it was five or six people. I think three went down. He walked away on the underground because he knew the system, you know, obviously. 1984, right, George Orwell's, Big Brother's watching you, there's cameras everywhere. So they, follow the, they, they follow him from the train station all the way to his home. NYPD showed up, and they locked him up. So you're going to get caught. To protect yourself, run high and fight, right? So you always hear about this run high and fight phase. Is there an accessible escape path available to you? You want to create that distance between yourself and the assailant. If not, hide. Buy yourself some time, all right? Silence your cell phones. Don't turn them off. You want to silence them. Right? Because you want to you use the 911 system and you want to text information. 
Maybe those first responders are through that door right now and say, where is that assailant? Well, as soon as you blow in the door, he's or they are in the left corner or in the right or in the center. You give them some type of intel. Um, you also want to lock, block doors and turn off the lights. You want to make yourself invisible. When your life is imminent danger, your last resort is to fight. Right? A last resort with all your might. This is it. Right? Know your procedures. Where are the exits? Can you find more than one? No exits. Can I break these windows to get out? Make awareness part of your routine, your family's routine, right? Think about what we just taught you. What works for your personal situation? Do you have small children? Mobility issues, special needs. There's all things going on for a plan of action. So this whole slide depicts on the first responders showing up, right? Not always a SWAT team, the first responders are, could be a patrol, right? Patrol comes in, right? They go to the fight, they go to the firefight, they neutralize that firefight, right? Bells and whistles are going off. People are hurt, people are dying, people are screaming, people are trying to tug on you. Don't, don't, don't touch the officer, because the officer is so amped up that he has no idea who's who. So he's gonna tell, or she's gonna tell them, stand up, if those guys can stand up, hands up. For your security, I wanna, I wanna see your hands, because this is what's gonna, what's gonna hurt you. Single file, out the door, into the parking lot, and we're gonna find out who you are, right? Sometimes the wolf likes to live with the sheep. So you have no idea if that may, may be a secondary shooter or a stab or a knife wielder. You have no idea. So that's why these procedures are in place. It's for your safety and the safety of the first responder. 488 uh, seconds, right? That's a 12 minute video of what they did, right? Describes best practices to survive an active shooter situation. There is a link at the end of this PowerPoint that you could take a picture of and you could watch it your own free time. How do we recover? When it's safe to return home, notify your contacts, right? Share where you're going. We're always saying share where you're going. Let them know where you're gonna be at. Alert them when you arrive at your destination. Hey, mom, pop, I'm here. Conduct a structural check, a visual structural check. Don't touch anything, because it, it, might, it, might be, it might be still active. Um, I want to say about Breezy Point, because I responded in Breezy Point for two months during Sandy as well. I got redeployed from Howard Beach to Breezy Point. House were displaced. Lift off the foundation. People want to go back to, to living normal, right? People started turning on their appliances. I'm like, what are you doing? And there was fires everywhere. There was fires everywhere, because people want to go back to normalcy. I got it. We all got it. Conduct a structural check, right? Check home for any damage before entry. If you are unsure, have checked by a professional, right? You have volunteer fire department. They can come out and check. You got LIPA. They're going to be overwhelmed. You got PSCNG as well. You got private companies out there that will check. Instead of you not knowing what to do, just call professionals. Uh, check utilities. Have utilities, company, professional inspect and improve service before turning back on. Check appliances, visually check for damage before re-energizing, because you can re-energize yourself, and that'd be the last day. When it's safe to return home, right? Dispose of waste, file directions from local authorities for all waste, food, household, vegetation, and construction debris. This is what I'm saying, where I lived uh, during Sandy, on Monday, my block, got to throw away all their garbage. And then Tuesday was the following block, and Wednesday was the following, so on. This whole point is, is not everyone wants to throw their garbage away, because that's gonna create rats, rodents, you don't want that in your neighborhood, right? And now you gotta be calling, you know, pet control and all that good stuff just to terminate that. That's more money. Um, you wanna also document damage. You wanna list and take pictures of your damage items, right? Because the assessors are gonna show up I had a tree go through my house during Sandy. Took a lot of pictures. My wife became a police officer. She was just like directing traffic. Hey, we're first, we're taking this tree out. So us, we had a secret mission. We came down with the military. My, my guys took a crane, took the tree off the roof. People were saying, hey, can you do this for us? I'm like, I'm sorry, this is my house. I gotta do this and I gotta go right back to Breezy Point. And that's exactly what happened. Um, you wanna contact your insurance company as quickly as you can because everyone's calling. You're not the only one. Everyone's going to be calling. So 
Thank God for USA, for those that are military. USA, for me, I swear, yeah, they're the best. I love them. Um, identify disaster assistance, right? There are assistance program. I think, I believe in 96, there was a blizzard and I got deployed um, in Peekskill, I think it was, for about a week. I came back and it smelled like a dead body in my apartment. And I was like, what's going on here? It was my refrigerator, it was off for about a week. I had meat in there and it stunk. So I called Con Ed, or I think I emailed Con Ed, and I told him, hey, listen, uh, this happened. All right, no problem. They sent me a check for, I think it was $300. I got assistance back. So there are assistance program here in Long Island as well, and there are in the five boroughs. Uh, be aware, stay alert, and be wary about scams, right? Something happens, people want to scam. Hey, construction worker, I work for ex construction worker. I could fix your apartment. I could fix your house, I should say. You know, you see them once, you, give them a, you cut them a check, you never see them again, right? You don't want that. Emotional needs, right? Surviving disasters physically demanding and emotionally demanding. We just went through COVID, right? Uh, ex, uh, Mayor Cuomo was reporting 800 a day dying. 800 a day dying. That plays in you mentally, right? Emotionally. You want to get involved, group dynamics, you want to seek them some therapy, you want to talk about it. Uh, most reactions will gradually decrease over time and you seek help and distress continues. Get involved. These are, anybody worked for American Red Cross volunteers? No? You got, you got uh, affiliated with recognized disaster volunteer organizations such as American Red Cross. Uh, November 12, 2001, Flight 587. Plane went into Bell Harbor. Never forget that. I, re I responded to that. My whole point is, Red Cross was boots on ground, and they were giving us blankets, soup, food. It was they're a great organization. They didn't say anything bad about them. After the disaster, before going uh, directly to volunteer relief organization, hospital, or disaster site, wait for instructions from local officials and check with specific organizations. You have AmeriCorps, right? They've been around for 25 years. Anybody knows community emergency response teams, otherwise known as CERT? They're also, they're like the auxiliary police. They assist, they're the, the eyes and ears they, of law enforcement. They help in parades. They're out there with their fluorescent green um, vests. And they're, I think they train once a week for 10 weeks to get certified. And they, they do all types of nomadic tools. It's like working in Home Depot. They show you how to operate tools. Uh, then you got the American Red Cross, which I like. Learn more, contact and community-based volunteer opportunities, right? You have faith-based volunteer organizations, and you have your auxiliary police, your volunteer firefighters, your, vo your volunteer EMS and paramedics. So you get involved. Uh, this slide is up here, right? We're the New York National Guard. We have citizens airmen, right? That's the Air Force as well. We get deployed overseas, and we also get deployed here at stateside. All right, my, myself and my partner are on SAD right now, State Activation Duty, that's what it stands for, National Guard, for that. We drill one week in a month and two weeks per year. That's increased because of the amount of training that we've been doing, you know. Um, and we're citizen soldiers, basically, so we are. Doing disasters, National Guardsmen, right, we save lives, we protect property and mitigate suffering. That's what we do. So, this is up here, right, www.dhses.newyork.gov. That's how we got this event. I believe I sp uh, we spoke, that young lady there with the green, forgot her name, I apologize. She's the one that coordinated this event for you guys to get your bags. So the whole thing of it is you need 50 or more to register to get these bags, okay? And we also do private events. Like less than 50, we go out there, there's no bags, but if you get more than 50 for your organizations, um, you can get your bags, your starter kit bags. These are the links. Anybody wants to take pictures of this? Those are your links. Um, any questions? You have a question? Okay. Yeah, take a picture, yeah. If you have any questions, we have Homeland Security here to answer questions as well. Um, the fire department back there as well? 
you know, member of the fire department. So any technical questions? You know? My name is Adam Warner. I'm with the New York State uh, Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness Team with the actual State Office of Emergency Management residing down here on Harris. Do you know, anybody have any questions about what they went over tonight? Feel free to ask now and grab me afterwards. And basically, anybody else needs time to take a picture of the links? No? And that concludes our presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you.